Hello and welcome to our online worship this week at St James's Church, Southam. We're continuing our series of God's People Pray and looking at different people through the Bible who were faithful in their prayer. And this week we're looking at the Apostle Paul and his letter to the church in Corinth where he describes a thorn in his flesh. So let's put aside the things of today and just prepare ourselves for a time of worship. Who can know the mind of our Creator? Who can speak of wonders yet unseen? Who can reach the height of understanding to play the notes of wisdom's melody? Who has weighed the dust of every mountain? Has walked the mysteries of the deep. Who has laid the earth on its foundation? And who conducts the waves upon the sea? I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe.
do indeed stand in awe of you, Lord God, our Creator, the one who has weighed the dust of every mountain, walked the mysteries of the deep, yet knows each one of us by name. So let's come to our gracious God in a time of confession. Let's say together, for those times I have been proud and puffed up and thought myself more important than others for my conceit and extravagant tongue that has belittled others and dishonoured you. Father, please forgive. In Micah chapter 6 verse 8 it reads He has told you what is good and what does the Lord require of you to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Father, please forgive and teach me to walk in your ways in humility and grace. Amen. Our reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 to 10. I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. 
And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think we probably all know that phrase, a thorn in the flesh. It means something that niggles away constantly, damages, disables. It's something that can cause real pain. I don't know what you would think of when you hear that phrase. But it will be something we feel we can do without. But it's always there, niggling. Paul speaks here of a thorn in the flesh in 2 Corinthians 12, 7. He calls it a messenger of Satan that had a purpose of torment. Many explanations have been put forward, but whether Paul is referring to a physical, spiritual or emotional affliction or something else entirely has never been answered with satisfaction. Since he was not talking of a literal thorn, he must have been speaking metaphorically. Some of the more popular theories of the thorn's interpretation include temptation, a chronic eye problem, malaria, migraines, epilepsy and a speech disability. Some even say that the thorn refers to a person such as Alexander the coppersmith, who did Paul a great deal of harm. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. No one can say for sure what Paul's thorn in the flesh was, but it was a source of real pain in the apostle's life. Paul prayed to the Lord three times to remove this source of pain from him. He probably had many good reasons why he should be pain-free. He could have more effective ministry. He could reach more people with the gospel. He could glorify God even more. But God's answer seemed to have been about grace in our weakness. Instead of removing the problem, whatever it was, God gave Paul more overwhelming grace and more compensating strength. Paul learned that God's power is made perfect in weakness. That despite his thorn, Paul did continue his mission right to the end and in such a way that we are touched by it today. So how do we experience this reading today? 
It expresses something of the spiritual battle we are in. And so we are clearly faced with a battle that can take all kinds of forms. Maybe temptation, disabling conditions, persecution, even from Christian people. And the purpose is to upset God's calling on our lives and knock us off track. For Paul, he had every reason to be proud of his credentials and experiences. Yet he sees this thorn as a reminder of his weakness and limitations, and therefore his reliance on God. I wonder if we've recognised those things in our lives and prayed for God to remove them. And yet somehow the thorn is still there. Is it a reminder of our weakness and limitations? Or something that gets us down? Or is it something that throws us back onto the grace and mercy of God? The exact nature of Paul's thorn in the flesh is uncertain. There is probably a good reason that we don't know. Maybe God wanted Paul's difficulty to be described in general enough terms to apply to any difficulty that we may face now. Whether the thorn we struggle with today is physical, emotional or spiritual, we can know that God has a purpose and that his grace is all sufficient. So in the battles that we face, let's pray as Paul found and ask for God's grace and strength in our weakness. What gift of grace is Jesus my i
May we pray. Lord, we pray for a government in chaos, changing policy and personnel almost daily. For a nation struggling with rising costs, increased hardship and fears for the future. For voices calling for fairness and justice in so many areas of life. For nations caught up in violence and destruction, especially the indiscriminate attacks in Ukraine. For leaders of nations parading power while ignoring the plight of their people and the many calls for peace. And for those working for the safety and protection of our world, challenging policy and destructive decisions. Lord, have mercy on our world, that we might return to you in humility and find your way of grace is more than enough. Amen. Let's say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delights and I I will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in Jesus, for your endless mercy follows me, your 
Majesty of the Father be the light by which we walk. The compassion of the Son be the love by which we walk. The presence of the Spirit be the power by which we walk. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>